could you, as the prosecutor, Stephen Schlosser, ask the judge to have a voir dire on whether or not that shooting affected their thoughts on Blue Lives Matter versus Black Lives Matter? Absolutely, Linda. You have an officer who tragically and heroically just died yesterday in the line of duty trying to save others. So no question. Uh, the prospective jurors' thoughts on law enforcement, Blue Lives Matter, I mean, everything. I mean, even this juror, this young man, he was asked about his thoughts on kneeling during NFL games and whether that's disrespectful to the American flag and our military folks. So all of this is relevant because, really, this case is about whether law enforcement acted appropriately. This, this juror, in particular, gave pretty strong opinions on both sides. He was very pro-law enforcement, but he also believe that there is systemic racism, and he specifically said that Chauvin used too much force on George Floyd, and that's what caused his Aren't death. Aren't you eliminating a fair jury, or are you looking for a fair jury, or are you looking for a jury that's not fair if you're a party? Well, Linda, we know how difficult it is to convict law enforcement officers in this country. They're rarely charged, and when they are charged, the conviction rate for murders is very low. So. If you're the state here, you need to make sure that you get those jurors that are willing to move forward and actually convict a law enforcement officer for murder. So these types of questions are appropriate, and you have to weed out jurors that just will always defer to law enforcement and refuse to convict them, because a lot of jurors out there, a lot of folks in the American public, they just won't do that. And this juror seemed to go the other way. We have uh, so much to discuss about jury selection sure. as its reflection of America, or is it a reflection of what has oh, just happened? This particular question of whether or not you wanted to fund the police when they're there protecting you in this courtroom? Yeah, the whole defunding the police line of questioning, I mean, really, they're just trying to get to jurors that have such a strong view of law enforcement that, you know, they really don't belong on this panel, you know, and again, you know, you're talking to someone who is a former prosecutor. I have respect for law enforcement. Um, defunding the police, although it's a new idea, really sort of has no relevance to the issues that are happening here in this case, at least whether, you know, Chauvin had the intent to commit the crimes, you know, second, third degree murder, manslaughter, and whether, you know, there's medical causation or drugs caused George Floyd's death. But again, you're really trying to get to those jurors on the fringes that have such strong views of law enforcement that they don't belong on this panel. Um, and this particular juror, and really uh, none of the jurors that we listened to, and over 100, had really, really strong views of defunding the police and said absolutely they should be defunded. So this whole line of questioning um, wasn't really the best. So, you know, we know from the questioning of this juror that the judge had actually gone over these questionnaires and made some changes, because if you listen to so some of the replays, the judge said to her, uh, well, this is kind of a long-winded question, not particularly done right, and that's my fault, I guess, I think were his, were his, were his exact quotes. So why is the judge changing the questions that are submitted usually by the attorneys, the prosecutor and defense? Why do you think he changed some of the wording of this question to make it more wordy? Yeah, some of them were double negatives, and there was just confusion. You had prospective jurors, and again, over 100 that we listened to. You know, they answered the question, and when the defense or the state would follow up, they said, no, 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 that's not what I meant. I meant that, you know, I'm pro-prosecute, uh, you know, I'm pro-law enforcement, or I do have negative views of Chauvin. Again, the questions were wordy. They really weren't written as well as they could have been, particularly with those double negatives. So I understand uh, why some of the prospective jurors were confused. So let's listen now to Special Assistant Attorney General, because remember this case is being prosecuted by the Attorney General Keith Ellison's court uh, group, which is which he's been in the courtroom. Okay, let's listen to the questioning by him of juror number fourteen. Black men and one black woman, okay? Now, with that understanding and with the fact that this juror, number 14, a woman in her 20s who was a social worker, is a social worker, was accepted, what was the prosecutor looking for with her with those particular questions? The prosecution and the state, they're asking 101 questions about their views of law enforcement. The primary issue in this case is race. The second is what do you think of law enforcement? What do you think of the appropriate techniques law enforcement use when they're making an arrest? Do you want to defer to them or do you want to kind of question them? So 
So all of these questions, whether it's, you know, Blue Lives Matter, whether it's, you know, your interactions with law enforcement from a speeding ticket to, you know, interacting with law enforcement in the course of your job, like this particular social worker, the attorneys are trying to get information, little nuggets that they can use because, you know, all of us, we bring our preconceived notions into that courtroom, particularly in a case like this. And those views of law enforcement are absolutely critical. Do you think the attorneys are including, uh, whether it's the defense attorney, Mr. Nelson, or Mr. Slisher for the prosecution, are using information they have from other sources? For instance, you sent around a thing to the office. Anybody know anything about these jurors that we don't know? And everybody in the office, and you're for the prosecutor, sends it back. Could be 1,000 people. Do you think they're using any inside information? Of course, Linda, especially right now with social media. And again, the two things, and I don't want to be, you know, an armchair quarterback here. The two things that I question Judge Cahill about, we've talked about. First is, you know, our 14 jurors, only two alternates. The second is he's not allowing them, the prospective jurors or the jury panel, excuse me, to watch the news, but he's allowing them to be on social media. Well, most of us get our news from social media. So it doesn't really make sense. And I can guarantee you that both sides and their consultants are stalking the social media profiles of the prospective jurors, because whether it's a tweet, whether it's a Facebook comment, whatever the case may be, even just liking an article or a post, that's going to provide insight as to this juror's beliefs on the key issues in this so, case. So, Nima, let me ask you a second question for the lightning round. You have these 11 attorneys. Only one of them is now communicating with the juror. That's Mr. Steve Slisher. Do you stay with him or is somebody else taking over the questioning? I think you might want to have two, but you certainly don't want to have more than two questioning the witnesses in the case and splitting up the work. Uh, the other issue that we've talked about is you have the Attorney General, Keith Ellison, in the courtroom. That is rare. I can tell you in California, I've never had Kamala Harris walk into the courtroom and actually handle the case when she was attorney really? general. That's now very, very uh, both racially and age mixed, all right? Does this whole theatric affect them, or do you think that it doesn't affect them? They're going to say, we're going to do our job. Absolutely everything affects them, from how you drive into the courtroom when you're in one of the attorneys, the shoes you wear, bells watch everything and anything can affect the jurors you want to make sure that you get their trust and confidence state in the country the jury instructions that say the testimony of witnesses whether it's law witness excuse me whether it's a law enforcement witness or a non-law enforcement witness is entitled to equal weight and you're supposed to evaluate it the same and look for bias you know the ability to observe the event and this juror said if two people are watching the same light one says red one says green i'm going to go to law enforcement so that alone contradicts the jury instruction and was enough for the state to get him kicked for cause. And let's not forget, the state wants atypical jurors. Normally, as a prosecutor, you love these pro-law enforcement witnesses. You want every one of your 12 jurors to be pro-law enforcement, because those are going to be the witnesses in your case, but not in this particular case when you have a police officer on trial. Yeah, and yeah but you have to wonder. Uh, I mean, I think both parties are wondering whether or not you do have stealth jurors on who were able to say what, uh, you know, the court wanted them to say or needed to hear them say versus uh, 127 and 121, who seemed to give their honest opinion. But anyhow, let's go back to our previous Civil segment. plaintiff's attorney, and we were all looking at the Noor case. Now, typically, the criminal case happens first because of the defendant's right to a speedy trial and the fact that these civil proceedings oftentimes are stayed because of the privilege against self-incrimination. So... Really, the amount of the settlement wasn't surprising because it was $20 million in the North case, and they got $27 million for uh, the Chauvin and George Floyd case. But the timing, the fact that it happened so quickly. But let's not forget these are separate cases, civil and criminal, state versus federal court, and different entities. You have the state of Minnesota prosecuting case. You have the city of Minnesota yes. who's civilly responsible. So these are political decisions that are made in addition to being legal ones. They have to be approved by the Minnesota City Council because of the amount of the settlement. So Linda, I'm all with you. I like Bob. I like being on his show. But you're right on this one that there's no connection whatsoever between this civil settlement and the criminal one. And you hit the nail on the head. The fact that this happened, we want to know now in the middle of jury selection, not after we have our jury already in panel two weeks into trial and we may be dealing with a potential mistrial.
So all we had to do was go back, re-question those jurors about this. We lost a couple of jurors. I thought we're pro-prosecution. But ultimately, every single juror on this panel was questioned about this settlement, so the judge handled it correctly. All right.